Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to talk about one of the biggest weaknesses of the Godot game engine and talk about how that might be going away. Now, Godot has had a heck of a week. Godot 4 was just shipped after many years in development. Uh, Godot for a completely free and open source game engine is available on so many different platforms. You can run it on uh, desktops such as Windows, Linux, Mac OS. You can run it on Raspberry Pi device. You can run it on a variety of virtual reality headsets. You can run it even on the web, but what you cannot do is run it on major platforms. So if you want to run a Godot project on, say, a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Nintendo Switch, that is where things definitely get more challenging. Now, there do exist some companies out there that specifically are about porting your Godot engine-powered games over to those platforms. For example, there is Lone Wolf Technologies. Uh, these guys port uh, Godot engine games, very specifically Godot engine games, over to the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation. Uh, they also work with publishing. They are um, an authorized by Nintendo and Sony. They also do consulting. So if you need help with your Godot game, they are out there. One of the people behind this is one of the founders of the Godot game engine to start things off. In addition to uh, Lone Wolf, there's another company out there called Pineapple Works, which does polishing, porting, and publishing. And as you'll see here, they support... Um, Unreal, Unity, and Godot Game Engine, as well as custom technologies as well. So if you need to port your stuff over to other platforms, another option out there if you're using the Godot Game Engine is Pineapple Works. Of course, you can also do it yourself. And one of the challenges when it comes to uh, these consoles is you need to have a developer agreement with the console manufacturer. That is under NDA, etc. However, there is a new option. Now, you may recall, if you're a regular this channel, that a company called W4 Games was formed around the Godot Game Engine. Uh, uh, this was founded by the other uh, founder of the Godot and some of the very key people in the Godot project in general. Uh, it did get an $8.5 million investment, and what they're all about is actually bringing games to other more closed or enterprise platforms. And we're starting to see some of the results of that. So they actually released a Direct 3D12 renderer as a result of their work, and today it is them that we are talking about. So this is W4 Games. Uh, they've got an announcement of the technology that they've got going on. So again, developing for consoles does have challenges for an open source project uh, because of such things as NDA agreement, as agreements, their entirely closed platforms, and so on. So that is what W4 is all about. So here you can see, again, they talk about the same companies we just mentioned, Lone Wolf or Pineapple Works. Those are porting companies. The difference here is W4 Games is a middleware company. So what they are doing is giving you the ability to publish your Godot game to those platforms, those platforms that were previously unavailable. So they're creating the technology required to support those platforms. Now do keep in mind, you are still of course going to need to have uh, a developer kit from those people. You're gonna have to have approval and a license to create on those platforms. So this doesn't mean you're magically gonna be able to create Xbox games overnight or anything like that other than using UWP, which is a different story. But say you want to publish on PlayStation, you're still gonna need to be a PlayStation developer. You're still gonna have to have your game approved. You're still gonna be under NDA and all that. But what W4 Games is doing is bringing the required technology. So instead of offering porting services, uh, W4 Games will be offering fully working console ports. These ports are intended to be middleware approved, meaning the console manufacturer approves the port and certifies that it meets the required standards of quality, as well as supporting the full or as close as possible feature set of the console. So this means uh, integrating with the existing console SDK. So think about this when you use, um, I don't use PlayStation very much, but when you use, say, an Xbox, there is the Friends lists, um, the achievements, all of that stuff that is built on top of it. So they're going to provide that integration as well. So W4 Games console ports will focus on offering the same ease of use that is characteristic of Godot itself, bringing a console porting experience as similar and feasible to the workflow for desktop and mobile platforms is today. Therefore, most developers will be able to port their own games by themselves with less reliance on third parties. We will also host community platforms where you can exchange information with other users and the W4 Games team itself in order to find solutions to most common problems and help us improve the offering. Now, this is actually kind of interesting because when it comes to those platforms, again, you have to be in a closed ecosystem because of the agreements you have. So having this support network could also be useful. So this is also going to be built entirely around uh, Godot 4, which again, as I mentioned, just shipped recently. So if you're using 3.x, uh, you do not have an option there. Although the earlier um, company I talked about doing porting, they actually use, if you go to their FAQ, their version that they work with is specifically using GLES3 
uh, which is Godot uh, 3.x specific. In fact, the render isn't available yet for um, Godot 4. So that could be a solution for you if you still need to port an existing earlier version. So this is going to be Godot 4 technology going forward. Now, one thing that you're going to wonder about is, well, what about cost? And there is a cost attached to this. W4 is a commercial company, uh, but they are going to be contributing a lot of the work back to the project itself. So uh, one of the most popular things to do is revenue share. Revenue share is the approach that... Um, that Unreal Engine uses, for example, but they are not going that route. Uh, so as Godot is FOSS software for your open source, uh, at some point it would become cheaper for successful studios to just roll their own ports to consoles rather than continuing to pay revenue share. And that is a definitely one of the downsides of being uh, built on uh, open source technology for your projects. Um, so re revenue share isn't really a sustainable model. So what they are going with is more of a yearly subscription. Again, this is not a yearly subscription for Godot. This is for the platform specific technologies. So um, W4 games, because the best business model instead and the route that W4 will most certainly take is to offer Godot console ports as an affordable and transparent yearly subscription that includes all platforms, um, but you, again, you still need to be conditional and approved and licensed by the actual platform manufacturer. That doesn't change. Price scheme will aim to be on par with other commercially available game edges that offer yearly subscriptions, but it will offer uh, significant advantages such as full source code access to the ports and inclusion of larger team sizes for every type of subscription. So you can expect it to be on par with what we see now for um the Unity game engine per developer licensing fees for the pro version. Now, do keep in mind that Unity switched their licensing a while back so that only pro level and above can console target. So um, if you're looking towards what the pricing is going to be, look at what Unity is offering, which I think is, uh, what is it, $225? And I, I'm not, not sure off my head, uh, but it is a per license fee. Uh, we'll also, as part of the subscription, uh, access to many of our upcoming W4 cloud services, such as online assistance, um, um, CI, performance analytics, uh, teams and backend services for authenticating users, etc. Uh, more will be announced in the coming weeks. Now, do you know that in the coming weeks, we do have GDC. So expect that the Game Developer Conference is when more of these details are going to be fleshed out. Uh, we uh, still want to allow developers to test their games on consoles without needing to pay for a subscription. So we are evaluating ways to make this happen. Hopefully, we'll be able to announce something like that in the future. And then uh, they are, of course, still part of an open source ecosystem. So again, when you talked about earlier on right here, where you're getting source code access, this isn't open source at this point in time. The stuff that you will get as part of your subscription, uh, this source code that they are talking about here, this is for a closed. So this part here, this is closed code specifically for targeting uh, these various different consoles. But what are they going to do back to the Godot project itself? Um, W4 continues to sustain its pledge that anything that makes sense to be included in Godot will be donated back to the project, no strings attached. Uh, in line with this commitment, we will be donating to the Godot engine large amounts of rendering engine and platform improvements. Already have uh, opened a pull request for the Direct 3D12 support in Godot. We talked about that one at the very beginning of this video. And we will eventually donate the parts that can be open sourced from the Microsoft GDK, the game development kit, uh, integration. Again, that can't all be opened up because some of that is proprietary and closed code. Uh, also, if any of these platforms ever make their APIs publicly available, so they're not under an NDA level, so something more like what Android has uh, and compatible with the MIT license, um, then they will, W4 will donate this code uh, for potential inclusion as soon as possible. So if any of these platforms ever open up the Xbox or PlayStation or Switch ever open up, boom, that will be there. Uh, it's in private beta. So GDC, they'll be enrolling game developers in the private beta. So that's a couple of weeks uh, of the console ports. If you sign up, you will be able to detain them, use them and give us feedback. Now, I'm not 100% certain which platforms are supported at this point in time. Um, obviously, with the direct 3D renderer, uh, that uh, Xbox is one of the list. I'm going to have to assume that Switch and PlayStation are at least on the radar, but I'm not 100% certain. Until they have all three, um, 
that's going to definitely be a hole in the ecosystem for Godot. And I do find this is an okay compromise because the problem is supporting these platforms in an open source project is definitely a challenging thing to do from uh, a licensing business and technical point of view. So having these commercial projects that also donate back to the main engine itself, while enabling, uh, you know, the majority of developers aren't going to support these platforms anyways, but to enable like a long runway for people to develop a game using Godot, I think normally this is is ultimately a win-win. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, W4 games that are going to be going into a closed beta in the, the sequence for GDC, which again is going to be over the next, what is it, three weeks from now. Um, and yeah, they are going to be... Um, going that route now again they do mention consoles specifically at this first paragraph where the the most people are making their money as apparently the biggest revenue driver for developers right now is the nintendo switch followed by the xbox and i know we already have the xbox as one of their targets so i would assume that switch is definitely a high priority on the other end um so yeah that is it that is what w4 games are doing let me know what you think of this strategy in general and that's it i'll talk to you all later goodbye